and the Indian Space Program. The spacecraft will be placed in an orbit around the Lagrangian, we have to get that name right, point one of the Sun-Earth system, about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, where the gravitational effects of both bodies cancel each other out. That parking lot is space or in space allows objects to stay put because of balancing gravitational forces. The Aditya L1 will have a continuous clear view of the Sun. As per Indian Space Agency ISRO, the mission will help observe solar activities and, ef and effects on space, weather in real time. What we also know is that the spacecraft will be carrying seven payloads to observe the sun's outermost layers, known as the photosphere and the chromosphere, including by using electromagnetic and particle or particle field detectors. Among several objectives, it will study the drivers for space weather, including a better understanding of the dynamics of solar wind. While NASA and the European Space Agency have previously placed orbiters to study the sun, it will be the first such mission for India. Now here's more on India's space program. The unmanned Chandra Ayan 3, meaning Mooncraft, in Sanskrit, touched down on the lunar surface on August 23rd. It marked the latest milestone in India's ambitious space program, sparking celebrations across the world's largest democracy. Remember, only four nations have landed successfully on the moon. That is India, Russia, the United States and China. India's space program has grown considerably in size and momentum since the nation first sent a probe to orbit the moon in 2008. In 2014, India became the first Asian nation to put a craft into orbit around Mars. The country is later to launch a three-day crewed mission into the Earth's orbit by next year. There are plans for a joint mission with Japan to send another probe to the moon by 2025. India is also aiming for an orbital mission to Venus within the next two years. All right, so let's talk to our senior correspondent Siddharth MP who's joining us live from Chennai. Good to see you, Siddharth MP. And um, just a quick one, what do we expect with this latest mission for India? Good morning, Eric. Uh, this is, in fact, a first-of-its-kind mission for India. Let's remember that over the last two decades, India has taken deep space exploration or space exploration very seriously because there are two kinds of missions that India generally does. One of them is the rocket launches that India does for its own, that is for our own benefits, including television broadcasting, ATMs, navigation, uh, defense and strategic purposes and so on. The others are the customer satellite launches where customers pay ISRO to launch foreign satellites or perhaps even satellites from India, but for a commercial purpose. And then there are the science and exploratory missions which ISRO has been carrying out. So this is to actually grant us a better understanding of space, grant us a better understanding of other planets. This is to actually appease the scientific curiosity of the masses and of course also the research and de uh, development community. So there are so many scientists, there are so many academia who are heavily invested in these fields. So this is actually to you know give them more data, to help them study more and to you know derive more science out of what these missions can offer. So Eric to talk about Aditya in particular this is a sort of continuation of a legacy of Indian missions. So India has done Chandrayaan-1 in 2008. Now there's three Chandrayaan missions that have happened. India has done one Mars Orbiter mission in 2013-14. So now this is the first mission to study the Sun. But of course, unlike the two missions which were, you know, as close as possible to the respective celestial bodies, this one is a mission that will study the Sun from as far as possible. This is almost 1.5 uh, million kilometers away from the Earth. And this is barely 1% of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. That's right. the Lagrangian point you were mentioning the name Lagrange. So Lagrange is an European mathematician and astronomer. Mm -hmm. So it's after him that this point was named because he found out that there are several points in space between two celestial bodies where you can stay in equil equilibrium, which means that with very less energy, you can stay in those places and you can be able to study the sun and you can study respective celestial bodies with complete ease. So that is exactly why this mission is being undertaken because the sun, as we know, is what holds the solar system together. It's the lone power source and for the Earth, the sun 
sun is our nearest star and sun is worshipped sun is studied widely so all reasons uh, for india to also do a solar mission all because right. only so far the european space agency and nasa have done it and when you do these own missions you get the data from it your academia benefits from it and you're also able to do high end research and provide inputs to the international community so uh, any nation that wants to you know progress in the field of science and technology has to do its own research and not depend on others research that's precisely why isro is undertaking this kind of a mission eric all right that is our senior correspondent siddharth mp explaining to us why this mission is important and he actually did say that name that uh, we are finding it difficult for broadcasters to actually mention lagrange as he said is a point where uh, this mission is going. Uh, this is a point in the orbit or a point in the space, and that's why it's called Aditya L1. Let's try and understand this mission again. And joining us is Manish Purohit. He's an ex ISRO scientist. He's joining us from Delhi. Manish, thank you very much for uh, you making time for us, and welcome to the broadcast. Now, Aditya L1 is going to observe the sun from the Lagrange. Uh, one point uh, in four months. What kind of new discoveries can we anticipate from this mission? Good morning, Eric, and thanks for uh, inviting me here to talk about Aditya. See, Aditya L1 is a mission that was proposed in 2008, and it was supposed to be a spacecraft that was supposed to go around the low Earth orbit around the Earth. Now, the peculiarities are if you're going around the Earth and observing the sun, you don't have 24-7 access to the information because sometimes you may get into the eclipse part of it. So the scope of the mission was enhanced. The budgets were a bit more enhanced. And it was supposed that, let's say, we'll go to L1 point because there we'll get 24-7 access to what all happens on the sun. Now, what actually happens on the sun? So actually, on the surface of the sun, it's like, you know, 10 megaton of hydrogen bombs blasting millions of them every second for billions of years. Enormous amount of energy. And that energy drives our solar system. Mm -hmm. That energy is what inundates us with the life because it's we are responsible. Sun is responsible for us to strive. We have all that warmth and everything we get from the sun. But what happens when sun gets angry? Why sun gets angry? Why there are solar flares? Why there are such spots on the sun where temperature suddenly goes down and then there is a big blast? Why the sun gets into a cycle of 11 years when it goes to the maxima? So these are the few things which are to be explored and they have been explored over the years. Okay. But this mission, this mission is going to do that in three different spectrums, visible, ultraviolet and X-ray. We are going to have a look at the complete disk of the sun 24-7 for the next five years and capture each and every information that we can have. Mm -hmm. We are having three in-situ experiments. In-situ means at L1 point, we are going to measure the high energy protons, high energy electrons, and the magnetic field. Now, why we are going to do that? Because we want to develop a model which can predict that what are the reasons we should be able to explain why that happens. And if something is happening on those lines, what is our prediction? It's just like, you know, uh, weather forecasting. When okay. our satellites capture the data of the Earth's atmosphere, we are able to forecast that, okay, there is a situation of hurricane, tornado, cyclone, heavy rainfall. So we are able to explain, we are able to predict that thing. Similarly, sun controls the space weather. Now, why space weather understanding is important? Because the most populous area in coming years with the spacecraft will be low Earth orbit. Everyone wants its spacecraft in the low Earth orbit because of the business opportunities. Space economy is thriving. ISRO knows that. Everyone knows that. And if we can understand these basic dynamics of the sun, and if we have a model that can predict if something is going to happen with the sun, we will be better warned what can happen in the future. And if possible, can we save all those spacecrafts in the low Earth orbit? Because if something strikes, that we, we call them CME, coronal mass ejections, high energy particles coming towards the Earth, if they somehow get into those lines okay. along that low Earth orbit stuff, then they can create big havoc. So, you know, we have to understand in that scenario, we have to understand the space weather. So Aditya is our first step forward and there will be many more such missions because what has happened right now with okay, Manish, in India is we have... Yeah. 
Okay, Manish, uh, sorry to stop you, but uh, we are out of time. Uh, that's a lot of explanation. I think now we get the point of why Aditya L1 is going to the sun and is going to observe the sun. We will be waiting for a few hours from now until Aditya L1 is launched. I've been talking to Manish Purohit. He's an ex-ISRO scientist. Manish, thank you very much for your time and for talking to me on One Is One today. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.